You like them? They're lovely. But Sam... Grace, listen. Don't say anything yet. Right. Look, the flowers and the, the candy are just tokens. I know they don't mean much compared to the real things like honesty and trust. No, they don't. Grace. Last night was the worst night of my life. Not not just because of the the demons from hell or not because we lost our house and all of our possessions. Last night was the worst night of my life because I had to spend it away from you. Now don't tell me you like the separation any more than I do because I spoke to Jessica earlier and she said you had a rough night too. Well, you know, it was a strange bed. And... <sighs> That's not it. And you know it. Grace, honey, I love you and I know you love me too. So why don't you just stop all this stubbornness and let me come home? And I'm not talking about the four walls we used to inhabit together. Home to me is you. But we'll make it better. Listen, the important thing is, is that we have each other. Our love. Please, Grace, listen, I don't want to spend time with Ivy because I know how I feel, all right? Then why did you lie to me all those years about your relationship with her? Because it was over. It didn't matter. I wish I could believe that. But I can't. Sam, put yourself in my shoes. Imagine that someone had come out of my past and that you had to deal with all these confusing situations that were thrown in my face. Like seeing you kiss Ivy under the mistletoe or all those times I walked in on you comforting her. And the worst one was you convincing me that I had had too much to drink when I saw her standing there, naked, trying to seduce you at the ski lodge last year. I mean, what would you do if someone from my past, you, you caught me like that and, and I had neglected to mention him? I mean, how would you feel? I'll tell you. You would be shocked. And you would feel angry. And you would feel betrayed by the one person in your life that you really thought you could trust. So Sam, I can't even start to believe in us again until you deal with your feelings for Ivy. So you go to her. You spend time with her, and then you come back to me, and then you tell me that I am the only woman that you love. That's when we can begin to rebuild what we had. But not until you do that.
Julian Crane. Is Ivy there? Who is this? It's Sam Bennett. Can I speak to Ivy? Well, 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 it's a relief to know that you made it through the night. See any more demons? Look, can I speak to Ivy or not? A very new millennium. My wife's ex-lover calls my house to ask my wife on a date. Look, you don't know why I'm calling. It, just for the record, uh, uh, Sam, you don't need to worry about bringing her home at a reasonable hour. In fact, it suited me if she never came back at all. But I could see where that might present a problem since the hounds of hell have destroyed your humble abode. Oh, my God, I knew I shouldn't have called. Well, no need to get huffy, Sam. I'll get the old gal for you. Uh, would you tell uh, <clears throat> Mrs. Crane that there's a call for her on the uh, main house line? Yes. Excuse me, Mrs. Crane. Yes, Lily. You have a phone call on the main line. Thank you very much. Hello? Sam? Ivy, no. Go ahead, Sam. Sam, is that you? Please, don't do this, Ivy. Grace, are you sure you want me to do this? Sam, you have to speak up. I, I can't hear you. Do you want to meet me someplace? 